In this video, we're going to talk about function composition. Now, function composition is a way of combining two functions where you put one function inside of the other function. Okay, the composition of f with g denoted by f circle g, and this circle does not mean multiply. Okay, it's not a multiplication symbol. f circle g, or f of uh, composed of g, is defined by f composed with g of x, or f circle g of x, equals f of g of x. Okay, so here we're putting the function g inside the function f. So g is the inside function, f is the outside function. Now again, this does not mean multiplication. This is not f times g of x. Okay, so even though we say f of g of x, that word of does not mean multiplication here. Okay, so let's do an example. Let's suppose we have f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 3, and g of x equals 3x minus 11, how do we find f circle g of 5? So f circle g of 5, or f composed with g of 5, just means f of g of 5. Okay, so what we need to do is to find g of 5. We always work in the inside part first. We find g of 5, that'll be a number, and then we're going to do f of that number. So some scratch work off to the side. What's g of 5? Well, g of 5 is 3 times 5 minus 11. And that would be 15 minus 11, which is 4. Okay, so g of 5 is 4. So f of g of 5 is like f of 4. Okay, now how do we find f of 4? Well, we have a formula here for f. And so let's plug in 4. So what we get is 4 squared minus 4 times 4 plus 3. And so that's 16 minus 16, which is 0, plus 3, which is 3. Okay, so f circle g of 5, or f composed of g of 5, ends up being 3. Okay, now we could compose the functions in the reverse order, where we have the f as the inside function and the g as the outside function. So instead of finding f circle g of 5, we're going to find g circle f of 5. Okay, and, and let's see, do we get the same number? Okay, notice what we have is uh, g of f of 5. So again, we'll need to do some scratch work. What is f of 5? Well, f of 5, if we plug it in to our formula for f, we get 5 squared minus 4 times 5 plus 3. So that'd be 25 minus 20 plus 3. So 25 minus 20 is 5, and 5 plus 3 is 8. Okay, so f of 5 is 8. So g of f of 5 would be like g of 8. Okay, because that's what f of 5 is. Now what's g of 8? Well, we have a formula for g. g of x is 3x minus 11. So g of 8 will be 3 times 8 minus 11. So that will be 24 minus 11, which is 13. Okay, so notice that g of f of 5 was not the same thing as f of g of 5, right? So if you compose functions in a, in a different order, you're not always going to get the same answer. In fact, most times you won't. Okay, now notice this one is g of g of 1. So here we're putting the function g inside of the function g, right? So this is really g of g of 1. So how do we find g of g of 1? Well, we need to do some scratch work. We first need to find g of 1, right? So notice that g of x is 3x minus 11, so g of 1 will be 3 times 1 minus 11. So that's 3 minus 11, which is negative 8. Okay, so g of g of 1 is like g of negative 8. And what's g of negative 8? Well, it'd be 3 times negative 8 minus 11. And that'd be negative 24 minus 11, which is negative 35. Okay, so you can compose a function with itself. Okay, let's do one more, uh, or actually two more examples here. Suppose f of x is 5x squared plus 2x plus 7, and g of x is 2x plus 3. How could we find a formula for f of g of x? Okay, where x is just a generic value, and also for g of f of x. Okay, and then state the domain of, uh, of each. So f circle g of x is equal to f of g of x. And that's equal to f of, well, g of x is 2x plus 3. Okay, so the question is, what's f of 2x plus 3? Well, if we were trying to find like f of 7, or f of 2, or f of 5, we would just plug in that number for x. Okay, uh, f of 0, just plug in 0 for x. If we're trying to find f of 2x plus 3, we're going to plug in 2x plus 3 everywhere we see an x here. So instead of saying 5 times x squared, this would be 5 times 2x plus 3 squared. And then instead of plus 2 times x, this will be 2 times 2x plus 3, and then plus 7. So you see what we've done here. We've taken our 2x plus 3, and we've plugged it in for both of these x's here in f. Okay, and we can simplify. So if you multiply out 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 3, if you FOIL that out, you're going to get 4x squared 
plus uh, 12x plus 9. Okay, so you could write out 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 3. If you, if you FOIL it out, that's what you'll get. And then we have the plus 4x plus 6 if we distribute the 2 plus 7. Okay, so now we can distribute the 5. This is going to give us 20x squared plus 60x plus 45. And then we still have the 4x plus 6 plus 7. And so if we combine our like terms, that gives us 20x squared plus, well, we have a 60x and a 4x, that would be 64x. And we have a 45 here plus a 6, that would be 51. And plus 7, that would be 58. Okay, so here is the function uh, f composed of g of x. Okay, and notice the domain of this function is really all real numbers. There's no number that we can't plug in for x. So the domain of this is just the uh, interval from minus infinity to infinity. Okay, now what if we want to convert, uh, compose them in the reverse order? What if we want to do uh, g circle f of x? Okay, well in this case we'd have g of f of x which would be g of what? Well, what is f of x? f of x is 5x squared plus 2x plus 7. Okay, now what is g of 5x squared plus 2x plus 7? Well, we have a formula for g of x. g of x is 2x plus 3. So g of 5 would be 2 times 5 plus 3. g of t would be 2 times t plus 3. And g of this thing is going to be 2 times this thing plus 3. So we have 2 times 5x squared plus 2x plus 7 plus 3. Okay, and if we distribute the 2, we're going to get 10x squared plus 4x plus 14, and we still have the plus 3 on the end. So combining our constants, we have 10x squared plus 4x plus 17. Okay, so notice this is the function composition when we do g of f of x. And again, notice the domain here is going to be the set of all real numbers. It's the interval from minus infinity to infinity. There's no number that you can't plug in there for x. Okay, and let's do one more example. Let's suppose we have uh, f of x is 2x plus 10 and g of x is uh, the square root of x. And the question is, what is f of g of x and what is g of f of x? And then state the domain of each. Okay, so f of g of x, f circle g of x, uh, is equal to f of g of x. But remember, g of x is the square root of x. So f of g of x is like f of the square root of x. And then what is f of the square root of x? Well, f of x is 2x plus 10. So f of the square root of x will be 2 times the square root of x plus 10. Okay, so that's the function composition. Now notice here, when we're thinking about the domain, we can't put just any old number in for x, right? We can't put any negative numbers in for x. We can't take a square root of a negative number. So the domain in this case is going to be the interval that's closed at 0 and going all the way up to infinity. Okay, you can take the square root of 0, so that's why we have a closed parenthesis, a closed bracket around the 0. And it's uh, the set of all non-negative uh, real numbers. Okay, and then if we did it the other direction, g circle f of x, what we get is g of what f of x is, right, which is 2x plus 10. And g of x is the square root of x, so g of t would be the square root of t, g of uh, 9 would be the square root of 9, g of 2x plus 10 is going to be the square root of 2x plus 10. Okay, so notice how our answers are different. This one is 2 times the square root of x, then plus 10. This is the square root of 2x plus 10. Okay, and now notice what is the domain? Well, we have to be a little careful. We can't plug in a negative number into a square root. So what we want to do is uh, we want to find the values of x that make 2x plus 10 greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so we're going to set up an inequality here. 2x plus 10 is greater than or equal to 0. Let's subtract 10 from both sides. We get 2x is greater than or equal to negative 10. If we divide both sides by 2, and since 2 is a positive number, we don't have to flip an inequality. So we have x is greater than or equal to negative 5. So only those numbers that are greater than or equal to negative 5 are going to make this part positive in here. If we picked a number that was less than negative 5, like negative 6 or negative 5.1 or negative 11 or something like that, then we'd be taking the square root of a negative number. So our domain in this case is just the interval from negative 5 up to infinity, and it's closed at negative 5.